So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, thank you so much for joining. I'd like to see uh, good wishes and uh, blessings of Radha and Krishna so that we can continue with the overview uh, of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on 86th chapter today. And for you to seek the good wishes of the present Vaisna so that we can uh, relish this uh, Bhagavatam. It's just so amazing, actually. Okay, so this is a sloka 52 of this chapter. Deva Shitani Tirthani Darshanas for Sanarchanahe Sane Punanti Kalena Tadapi Ahatama Mekshaya. Translation One can gradually become purified by seeing, touching, and worshipping temple deities places of pilgrimage and holy rivers. One can attain the same result immediately simply by receiving the glance of exalted sages. So we've come across this verse a few times, a uh, similar sort of verse, and it just describes how the association of the Vaishnav is so powerful. Um, so let's see the context of this. This chapter 86 is um, entitled Arjun kidnaps Subhadra and Krishna also blesses his devotees. There's two amazing devotees that he meets in Mithila, uh, Bahula Swa and Shutadev. So when um, King Parikshit desired to learn about the marriage of his grandmother, Shubhadra Devi. Yeah, so very interesting um, how, so Arjun, and uh, Subhadra, they, they, uh, Abhimanyu was the son who was married to Uttara and they had a son called Parikshit. So uh, Parikshit Maharaj was inquisitive. What happened about my, I heard they had an amazing marriage uh, ceremony or situation. What happened? Sukadev Goswami said, while Arjun was traveling on pilgrimage. So this is, um, I don't know how accurate this is, but we just found it on the internet, uh, Arjun's pilgrimage. Um, so it's set off. Must have set off, yeah, there and then on around, then eventually come to Dwarka. I don't know if this is the current tour, because I think he had a couple of tours, but anyway, interesting, uh, his journey. So while touring on pilgrimage, Arjun heard that Lord Baladev intended to give the hand of his sister, Shubhadra, to, of all people, Duryodhan in marriage. No one approved of this plan. <laughs> but of course, Balaram was pretty strong-headed. So um, it wasn't going to be so easy to persuade him willingly for Subhadra to be not married to Duryodhana. But nobody liked it. Mother, uh, Vasudev, Devaki, Krishna. Nobody liked the idea. So, and then when Arjun heard, he wanted to kidnap Subhadra and marry her himself. So he disguised himself as a sannyasi, complete with Tridandi, and he went to Dwarka. And so effective was his disguise that neither Balaram nor any other resident of Dwarka, except Krishna, of course, recognized him. Rather, they all showed him the respect due to a Vaishnava vindicate. In this way, the four months of the rainy season passed. One day, Arjun received an invitation to uh, dine at Balaram's home. So Balaram was also very impressed with this renunciate who had arrived in Dwarka. So he invited him home. Come, take Bashar. Extraordinary. There he caught sight of Subhadra. So 
So he had heard about Subhadra's beauty, and just by hearing, he became attracted to her, fell in love with her just by hearing. So first time he saw her was when she was serving him, and he was over, over immediately overwhelmed with desire for her. And similarly, Subhadra also desired to have husband uh, Arjun as her husband. Thus, she glanced back at him shyly. A few days later, Shubhadra left the palace to participate in a temple festival. Taking this opportunity, Arjun, Arjun abducted Subhadra, who was, which was sanctioned by her parents and by Krishna. So Krishna actually uh, wanted this to happen because nobody wanted her to marry Duryodhan. But also Arjun was a very suitable candidate. And also for the future of this Bhagavad Puran, it was essential that uh, Arjun married Subhadra. Otherwise, there would have been no Bhagavatam as we know it anyway. So a couple of pictures. This is uh, Subhadra is being uh, kidnapped by Arjun. And I think what happened was um, Krishna I, I don't know where I've seen, I think I've seen it in some Mahabharat series that he advised her, the he advised Arjun, make sure Subhadra is uh, holding the reins of, to the horses while you're kidnapping, because that way, that will convince everybody that this is not a kidnapping. She wanted to be with you, wants to be with you. As Arjun took Subhadra away, her relatives shouted in anger, but standing on his chariot, Arjun took up his bow and drove off the uh, valiant fighters and palace guards who tried to block his way. When Balaram heard of Subhadra's kidnapping, he became as disturbed as the ocean during the full moon. He was very angry at Arjun. He took up his bow, he was ready, or his gada, he was ready to fight with Arjun. But Lord Krishna, respectfully took hold of his feet, lotus feet, and together with other family members, pacified him by explaining the matter. And what was the matter? The matter was that she wanted to marry Arjun and it wasn't a kidnapping, it was a uh, mutual consent. And she doesn't want to marry Duryodhan. So Balaram became pacified. And then he happily sent the bride and the groom uh, very valuable wedding gifts consisting of elephants, chariots, horses, male and female servants. So this is the kidnapping of uh, Subhadra. And then uh, Sukadev Goswami describes uh, a couple of devotees to uh, Parikshit Maharaj. There was a Brahmin devotee of Sri Krishna named Shrutadev who lived in the city of Mithila. Perfectly satisfied by rendering unalloyed devotional service to Lord Krishna. He was peaceful, learned, free from sense gratification. He would earn only enough, barely enough to keep himself and his family alive. Still, he was always satisfied and spent all his time executing his religious duties. So this is a little bit like um, Sudama. At the same time, there was a king called Bahulasya, Bahul, uh, Bahulasva, Lashwa, who was another great devotee in the same place, Mithila. And he was a member of, a member of the dynasty in which King Janak had appeared. Bahu, Bahu Lashwa ruled over the whole province of Bedeha. But yet he remained as detached from material wealth as Shrutadev. This is really rare to having a wealthy king to be as detached as a Brahmin like Shrutadev. 
pleased with his devotional attitude, with the devotional attitude of both these great souls, Lord Krishna went on his chariot to Mithila to visit them, taking along Nara, Vama, Dev, Atri, Krishna, Devayana, Vyas, Pashuram, Ashit, Asita, Aruni, uh, so himself as well. So that is, that's not me, Shukadev Goswami, okay? Shukadev, maybe? <laughs> Brihaspati, Kanva, Maitriya, and Chavana. So this is really amazing entourage with Krishna. In every city and town, the Lord passed along the way, O King. The people came forward to worship him with offerings of agya, water in their hands, as if to worship the rising sun surrounded by planets. When he reached Vidaha, 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 the people of Mithila greeted the Lord and his saintly entourage with great delight. Bearing various gifts for Krishna, they bowed down and offered obeisances to him, to both him and the sages. So, Bahulashwa and Shutadev both stepped forward and respectfully requested Sri Krishna to visit their homes. To satisfy both of them, the Lord expanded himself and went to each of their homes simultaneously, neither of the two devotees being aware of this. So this is similar to when Krishna would have a picnic with the Gopas. He would be sitting with them. Each one would be thinking, Krishna is just with me, enjoying picnic just with me. And each of them would be absolutely spot on. <laughs> each of them would be absolutely correct. Um, Krishna was with them alone, <laughs> but he was with everybody alone. <laughs> Similarly, with the, with the queens as well, he would expand himself 16,108 times, be with each and every single queen. And each queen would be thinking, Krishna is with me alone. When uh, Bahulashwa saw Lord Krishna, was somewhat fatigued from the journey, he immediately arranged to have seats of honor brought out for them. Bahulashwa worshipped him suitably, offered prayers, worshipped his feet, sprinkled, and then sprinkled themselves and their family members with the wash water. After that, he worshipped all those great lords by offering them fragrant sandal with paste, flower garlands, fine clothing, ornaments, incense, lamps, argya, cows, bulls, sumptuous feasts were offered to the Lord and the sages. Okay. Now, yes, Nariman. What Do you know what is aragya? Aragya, I think that's water. This is uh, sacred water. Sacred water. Okay. And, yeah. okay. Some spices in it as well. Mm. And you might wonder, how did... Um, oh, no, Balu was fun. That's fine. Because Balu, uh, Balu, Balu Lashwa, he was a king, mm -hmm. so he could afford to give cows and bulls. But often the devotees, they would mentally offer manasi, they would offer through the mind uh, whatever they can, mm -hmm. whatever they wanted to, to the Lord. And the Lord would accept those, even within the mind. But if one has the ability to give, then one gives. But if one doesn't have the ability, one can still give, but through the mind. When they had eaten to their full satisfaction, for their further pleasure, the king began to speak slowly in, and in a gentle voice. As he, okay, as he heard, Lord held Lord Vishnu's feet in his lap and happily massaged them. So he was saying this, neither Ananta, Goreshri, Lakshmi, nor unborn Brahma, Brahma is dear, dear to you than his, your unalloyed devotee. And to prove your own words true, you have now revealed yourself 
to our eyes. What person who knows this truth would ever abandon your lotus feet when you are ready to give your very self to peaceful sages who call nothing their own? This is really a powerful statement. Eh? Please stay a few days in our house uh, along with these Brahmins. And Krishna consented, of course, to stay for some time to bestow good fortune on Mithila. So, um, yeah, this statement is so amazing. How Krishna, and then we hear it again and again. Every time you hear or read it, you think, wow, this is our Lord. He's so sweet. He'll give everything to somebody who has nothing. And they worship him. He gives everything. He gives himself as well. So then the Brahman, the poor Brahman, Shruta Dev received Lord Achyuta in his, into his home with as much, as much enthusiasm as that shown by King Bahul Lashwa. After buying, bowing down to the Lord and the sages, Shruta Dev began to dance with great joy, waving his shawl. After bringing mats of grass and seating his guests, he greeted them with words of welcome. Then he and his wife washed their feet with great pleasure. With the wash water, he sprinkled himself, his house and his family. Overjoyed, he felt that his, all his desires had now been fulfilled. He worshipped them with offerings of auspicious items easily available to him such as fruits, uh, ushira grass, the root, whatever that is, pure nectarian water, fragrant clay, tulsi leaves, usha grass, and lotus flowers. Then he offered them food that increased the mode of goodness. He wondered, how is it that I, fallen into the blind well of family life, have been able to meet Lord Krishna and these great Brahmins. And this is the mood that we should always have, that how is it, my dear Lord, that you are allowing us to do some little seva for you? This is insignificant, but how is it even that you are allowing us to do some seva? Because doing seva to the Lord is as good as having his darshan. There's no difference between doing bhakti and having the darshan face to face with the Lord. It's really, we're very, very fortunate. And how is it that fools like us can be engaged like this by the Lord? Amazing. He addressed the Lord. It is not that we have attained the audience of the Supreme Person only today, for we have, in fact, been associating with him ever since he created this universe. You really, you reveal yourself within the hearts of those persons of pure consciousness who constantly hear about you, chant about you, worship you, glorify you, converse with one another about you. But although you reside within the heart, you are very far away from those whose minds are disturbed by their entanglement in material work. You are that supreme soul. You are that supreme soul, and we are your servants. How shall we serve you? Such wonderful prayers. This is really interesting. We have, in fact, been associating with him, that supreme person, ever since he created this universe. How is that? Through the Paramatma, right? We've been never away from the Lord, but we just don't realize it. Supreme Lord replied, so I think we've taken a lot of what's been said now in the verses, because these are really phenomenal prayers. I mean, phenomenal verses. My dear Brahman, you should know that these great sages have come here just to bless you. They travel throughout the worlds with me, purifying them, purifying the worlds with the dust of their feet. Now Krishna glorifies the sages, always doing that. One can gradually become purified by seeing, touching, worshipping temple deities, pictures of pilgrimage, places. places of pilgrimage and holy rivers. But one can attain the same result immediately 
simply by receiving the glance of exalted sages. So this is Lord Krishna himself speaking that verse that we read right at the beginning of the chapter. So this is really strong confirmation from the Lord himself. By his very birth, a Brahman is the best of all living beings in this world. And he becomes even more exalted when he's endowed with austerity, learning, self-satisfaction, what to speak of devotion to. So we saw the Brahman Ashwatthama. He was so crazy that he killed the children of Dopadi. But because he was a Brahman, because he was a son of Dronacharya, the guru of the Pandavas, Draupadi pleaded, don't kill him. <laughs> He's a Brahman, don't kill him. So even Brahman by birth has some very good qualities, even though the behavior may be very bad. But when he is endowed with austerity, learning, self-satisfaction and devotion, that Brahman is non different from Krishna himself. becomes even more exalted. Even my own four-armed form is no dearer to me than a Brahman. Within himself, a Lanad Brahman comprises all of the Vedas, just as within myself I comprise all of the demigods. Ignorant of this truth, foolish people neglect and enviously offend a learned Brahman who being non-different from me is their spiritual master and their very self. They consider worshipable only such obvious manifestations of divinity as my deity form. Krishna is describing the first class type of devotee. And he's also describing the second class type of devotee. They see the old temple on the, de uh, all the uh, they see the deity on the temple and they'll worship. Actually, yes, Nalini. Yeah, the Brahmanas that he is describing, these are not by birth, isn't it? By twice born Brahmanas mm. after, yeah. yeah. They are twice born anyway, Brahmans by by nature. But these are he's talking about the learned Brahmins, those who are yeah. practicing Brahmins. So they are they don't even have to be born as Brahmin. That's correct. You're right. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're correct. They become Brahman by the learning and by the characteristics. Yeah, but even yeah, that's true. But even what Krishna is saying is, even those who are born as Brahmins, they may behave crazy, but still, because they're born as Brahmins, there's something about them which is different. That's what I always thought, Prabhuji. Not hmm. talking about myself, but generally, that those who are born in the Brahmin family, there is something, little yeah. bit little bit like Sukruti or something done mm. in the past that they're born in the programming okay. families. Correct. Yeah. 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 Because that, yeah, because that, that Sukruti, they wouldn't have been born in that family. Yeah. Because knowing my father, he was so much into Krishna and uh, on, and he had five brothers and all were named after Krishna's uh, names. Wow. Mm. Shyam, Balram, Manu, Mukun, and Krishna. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so this is a this is a Brahmin family being born, yeah. children born in Brahmin family. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if a yeah. Brahmin behaves in a crazy way, you know, we don't really have any business to criticize. We just leave it as it is. Don't worry about it. It's not our problem. Don't make it our problem by criticizing, you know. But what yeah. Krishna is saying is those who are learned, those who are true Brahmins, they're really dear to him, very then not different from him. So that's powerful. I remember my father doing all the slokas in the morning, and he was, and those slokas are something that I still remember. We remember it as a family. Slokas, right. and we were very young at that time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I pronounce them my parents. Yes, 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 for sure. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Eh? Yeah.
Because he has realized me, a Brahman is firmly fixed in the knowledge that everything moving and non-moving in the universe and also the primary elements of his creation are all manifest forms expanded from him. So, of course, the definition of a Brahman is uh, also through his qualification. So one may be born in a Shudra family, but if one shows the qualities of the Brahman, then he's regarded as a Brahman. So that's important. So nobody can stop being a Bra uh, being coming a Brahman. It's not just birth that determines. Birth helps. Birth will give, as you said, some sukuti. But um, it's not necessarily a condition that one is only born a Brahman. Therefore, you should worship these Brahman sages or Brahman. <laughs> With the same faith you have in me, if you do so, you will worship me directly, which you cannot do otherwise, even with offerings of vast witches. So Krishna is giving some really strong hints and some secrets here. Serve the Vaishnavas, serve the Brahmins. Thus both uh, Shutadev and the king attained the ultimate transcendental destination by the wonderful instructions of the Lord. After staying, staying for some time with these two great devotees, the Lord returned to Dwarka. Oh, that's, uh, we've already been through that. So that's the end of chapter 86. Any, any questions, any comments? I think the prayers, one thing that has struck me is the realization that the prayers by that Brahman, Sutra Dev, Sutra, whatever, Dev, yeah. he said that even though the Lord is in your heart, he's still very far for yeah. those who are contaminated with the material world, material, yeah. Yeah. materially minded. So that is a very true. Yeah. 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 It's a very it's nice a point. Yeah. Yeah. Struta Deva. Sure. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a very nice point. He also says right at the beginning that we've been with you all the time. Uh, you know, we've been associated mm -hmm. with you since you created this universe. But, but we're also far away because our mm -hmm. minds are disturbed by being entangled in this material world. It's an important realization. And without that realization, we're not going to make progress. No. So it's a good one. Yeah. That's a nice, nice phrase. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Really good. Uh, so, Rinder, anything you'd like to share? Hare Krishna, Dandavat, everybody, Nitai Gaur, Haribo. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so, we came across in this uh, chapter of Bhagavatam about uh, the merciful glance of the devotees. This uh, phrase, yes. So, Goranga Mahaprabhu, when he took uh, initiation from Ishvara Puri, so after taking initiation, he offered a prayer at the lotus feet of Ishvara Puri. And he offered the prayer was as follows, that may your merciful glance be always bestowed upon me. Yeah. Like that. So this is very, very important and interesting to note about our prayer mood should be that we pray to Hari Guru and Vaishnava. Vaishnavas, that your merciful glance will always be bestowed upon us. This is a very beautiful prayer mood. And uh, surprisingly, when uh, I had my Harinam Diksha uh, with our Guru Dev Shila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, and uh, I, I had at that point I didn't, I had not read this Leela in uh, Chaitanya uh, Bhagavad about Guranga Mahaprabhu offering this prayer to his spiritual master that may your merciful glance be bestowed upon me. Mm. So when we had darshan of the Harinam Diksha, we went Ananda Lila myself. We went to have darshan of Gurudev. And then uh, while having darshan uh, by I can say by divine uh, mercy, I was inspired to offer this prayer at the lotus feet of Gurudev. May your merciful glance be always bestowed upon us. 
and he was very pleased with mm. his prayer. Yeah, simple, very simple prayer, mm. but uh, he, he, uh, he was very, very pleased, yes. So this is uh, very nice that our prayer mood should always be like that. And uh, also, I would like to quote from Sri Sri Prabhupada uh, as uh, I'll read the translation. Yes. yes. He, surrendered, he surrendered souls various serving relationships with the Lord. For the entire creation, your father, mother, beloved son, dear well-wisher and friend, you are the universal guru, the ultimate refuge. And also I am yours, sustained by you, a member of your family. You alone are my shelter. I am your surrendered soul, and such as I am, your dependent. This prayer was offered by Sri Sri Yamunacharya, a great devotee. Yes, also, and then uh, uh, this in this chapter I explain about the, uh, the associates of Lord Sri Krishna, who went to visit those two great souls, and. Uh, some glories of the brahmanas and these brahmanas are not ordinary brahmanas they are brahmanas the servitors of krishna therefore vaishnavas and therefore uh, in uh, the eight goals which shila bhaktivinoda bhakti thakur shila bhaktivinoda thakur emphasizes the divine master sri vrindavan the residence of sri vrindavan the pure vaishnavas the brahmana section the worshipful mantras, the holy name, a yearning to serve the divine couple, that is Shishi Radha Krishna. So these eight goals we've been advised to remember and always serve. Yes, so uh, this is our, our uh, uh, aspiration, eternal aspiration, that uh, we will always desire to have uh, Namaruchi, a taste to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra and uh, the various uh, worshipable, most worshipable mantras, and uh, Namaruchi, Jivedaya, uh, to distribute Krishna consciousness to the, uh, uh, to the other people, and also Vaishnav Seva. You always to be in this mood of Vaishnav Seva and serving all the devotees. And uh, our prayer is also Vishwambhara Vishwara Kalyana, that we become well-wisher for one and all. We wish good in the sense that we pray to Goranga Mahaprabhu that he will bestow his mercy upon one and all, to everybody. Nitai Gora Haribol Prabhu, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Sri Hare Krishna. Uh, Mother Sundar? Uh, I don't think he is back yet. <laughs> so, okay. no, you go for it. I, yeah. Okay. Please pardon me for any mispronunciation. Hare Krishna. Bhagavatam We get to learn how Krishna, along with sages like Narad, Vyas, Parsidam, etc., visits the two of his pure devotees, Shrutadev, who was a renunciate, and the other king. Bahula Sva of Mithili. Krishna simultaneously represents himself in both these devotees' household along with all the sages as well upon that invitation. How both receives Krishna and the sages and the offer, and the offer is there, make according to their status is worthy of nothing. The reciprocation, the reciprocal instructions from all of them are worth studying. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada concludes, the instruction we receive from the incident, the incident is that King Bhaulusva and Sutta Dev, the Brahman, Brahmana were accepted by the Lord on the same level because both were pure devotees. This is the real qualification for being recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Very good. Yes, because the king was a Kshatriya. Yeah. Uh, he renounced it as a Brahman. 
Yes, very nice, a nice uh, point uh, by uh, Madhusan Prabhu. And thank you for reading, Moshi. Thank you. I hope I didn't make many mistakes because sometimes oh. the words are tongue twisters. <laughs> There's no mistakes. Uh, now, I just wanted to share with devotees today, we were very lucky to have, um, see if I can find this one second. Uh, yeah, while you're finding, I just saw the clip yes. you sent. I think uh, Subhadra Rani being uh, kidnapped and seeing Sub Jagannath Bhakti Subhadra was such a pleasure. <laughs> But yeah. I won't say much. You can show the clip, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. So today, let's have a quick look at this photo. Just one second. Now, I'll try to share this if it allows. Uh, can you see this? Have you not looked? Oh, no, no. Are you able to see Jagannath here? Yes, thank you. Oh, okay. So this is. Uh, Lord Jagannath in Tenerife, he's uh, really chilled out. <laughs> um, this is Shubhadramani. Huge deities. And uh, this is Balaram. Very, very nice. And then this is uh, Giri Govardhan, Giri Raj. Two of them. I presume it's Krishna Balaram. You can ask them actually. And then we just wanted to share. I don't know if this is going to come up. We, um, uh, Genty cooked uh, Rajburg. Beautiful. Okay, this, this is uh, in Tenerife. Jagannath Balakif. And it's all right from Belaya. It's in May 13th. And uh, yeah, we managed to cook a little bit. I made the main dishes, mm -hmm. which is the uh, salad and the chutney. Gently just did the side dishes like the uh, sabji and the uh, rice and the dal and the chapati and the dokla and the halwa. <laughs> Yeah. So, Shimad Bhagavatam Kijay, Spontaneary Kijay. 